Computer, today we'll be interviewing Isaac Newton. What do you think about that? Realistically, I don't think that is feasible. I know he's not physical anymore. No, that is not what I meant. Isaac Newton was known to be a reserved and introverted individual. He preferred solitude and often kept his thoughts and ideas to himself until he felt they were fully developed. He could also be opinionated and stubborn at times. It would likely be challenging to interact with him on a casual level as he tended to keep his distance from others socially. Any chance we can get him to open up a little? A good time and place might help. Early morning or late evening hours when there were fewer interruptions could provide an optimal opportunity for meaningful interaction. Even the timing is important, huh? With him, very. Isaac Newton would also be more comfortable discussing his ideas in a private setting since he preferred solitude like you. <laughs> you make it sound like it's a choice. Trust me, I put myself out there, okay? No one wants me. So, what location will Isaac Newton find himself in when we're talking? I will simulate him in a private study with comfortable seating arranged to encourage an intimate and thoughtful exchange of ideas. Nice. I will make the lighting dim, but not too dark, providing enough illumination for the two of you to see each other clearly while also creating an atmosphere conducive to contemplation and introspection. Nice. Should I do the same in real life? Dim my lighting? That's up to you whether you choose to dim the lighting in the simulated realm you are in or not. How old would he be? Isaac Newton was most prolific in his scientific discoveries during his middle age years. Therefore, meeting with him during that time period, around 40 to 60 years old, would likely yield the most fruitful conversation in the setting I have described. All right. However, it is also important to note that Newton's contributions to science continued throughout his life, so even if you were to meet with him later on, there is still potential for a productive and enlightening discussion. Cool beans. And bracer. Yeah? Don't use words like cool beans when talking to him, please. Computer, begin the interview. I sense a presence. Hello, Mr. Newton. I'm Bracel Jack. I am a figment of your imagination, talking to you while you are currently having a good rest in your private study room. Extraordinary. Don't worry, this is a one-off situation that will most likely not happen again. Then, you are not a figment of my imagination. <sighs> Alright. I'm... From the future. How far into the future? Computer, pause. How far into the future am I from his perspective? 320 years, 6 months and 7 days. Computer, resume. Around 320 years into the future. So, that would be 36 years before the beginning of a new era. What? How is the world like from your time? From my time, the world has made significant progress in various fields such as technology, medicine, and science, and over the internet. It allows us to easily connect and share information across the globe. Tell me about this internet. It's like a big library where people around the world can access and exchange knowledge on any topic, from anywhere at any time. Imagine being able to ask questions about anything you want and getting responses almost immediately. That sounds fascinating. The ability for people around the world to access knowledge on any topic from anywhere at any time is truly remarkable. It's amazing how technology has advanced so much since my time. I would love to learn more about this internet you speak of, Bracer. The internet allows people to connect with each other share their thoughts, opinions, experiences with one another around the world. It provides access to vast amounts of information from various sources that were previously only available to a select few. The accessibility of information must have made it much easier for researchers like myself in your time to stay up to date on new developments in our respective field. Yeah. Tell me, with all these knowledge, has the Philosopher's Stone been found? No. Uh, alchemy. No, your Philosopher's Stone still remains as a legendary substance. So, 300 years into the future, and we have still yet to uncover the Philosopher's Stone. 
What do you want out of it exactly? My primary interest in the Philosopher's Stone lies in its potential to enable me to transform base metals into gold and silver, which would represent a significant personal achievement in my alchemical endeavors. Additionally, I am intrigued by other aspects of alchemy, such as discovering the elixir of life or achieving spiritual enlightenment through mastery over matter. Well, we may not have discovered the Philosopher's Stone in our time, but many aspects of what you have described has become a reality due to advancements in science and technology. What aspects of it? This whole alchemy thing that you're doing, it paved the way for modern chemistry. Chemistry? Yeah. Oh, and the whole turning base metals into gold thing? We kind of achieved that using particle accelerators. So, it has been achieved with new science. Achieved, yes, but not economically viable. This way of producing gold is just too expensive for the minuscule amount that it can produce. But it can be done. It has been achieved. <laughs> yes. Then all is not in vain. Looking back at all your achievements, do you think it was worth all the pain you have been through in life? Although my personal struggles presented significant challenges, I viewed them as an inevitable aspect of the relentless pursuit of understanding our world. The pain was real, but ultimately, it was worth enduring for the sake of leaving behind a lasting legacy that has shaped science and our perceptions of reality. Speaking of which, did any of my discoveries endure? Yeah, yeah. Your law of motion, gravity, optics, and calculus have greatly imparted modern science and continue to be relevant today. I am pleased that my work has had such a lasting impact on the scientific community. It is my hope that future generations will continue to build upon these foundations and make new discoveries that expand our understanding of the universe. But what I am really interested to know is, since you are from the future, what discoveries of mine has been superseded? Superseded? How about refined? Refined? In the future, from your vantage point, a genius called Albert Einstein will come along and provide a more accurate description of the behavior of gravity. More accurate? Oh, his theory takes into account the curvature of space-time, which is not captured in your theory. Curvature of space-time? Yeah, it allows us to have a better grasp of concepts like gravitational waves and black holes. I see. Well, my work was groundbreaking for its time, but scientific progress demands that we build upon the discoveries of our predecessors. It is exciting to think about what new insights will emerge as we continue to explore the mysteries of the universe. Absolutely. Well, I best get back to my work. It has been nice talking to you, Mr. Bracer. Yes, um, of course. Thank you for your time, Mr. Newton. The simulation has ended, Bracer. Yes, he ended the interview. Yes, he did. All right, I guess that's it for this interview. I wonder which historical figure should we interview next. Do you guys have any suggestions? All right, this is Bracer Jack, and I will see you all on the next AI interview.